God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Whoever humbles himself like a little child will be greater in the kingdom of heaven. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. Truly I have set my soul in silence and peace, as a child has rest in its mother's arms. Even so, my soul. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Whoever humbles himself, like, like a, a little, little child, child will, will be, be greater, greater in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven. heaven. With simplicity of heart, I have joyfully offered everything to you, my God. O Lord, remember David and all the many hardships he endured, the oath he swore to the Lord, his vow to the strong one of Jacob. I will not enter the house where I live, nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes. To my eyelids I will give no slumber, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. At Ephrathah we heard of the ark. We found it in the plains of Yarim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness. Your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With simplicity of heart, I, I have, have joyfully, joyfully offered everything, everything to you, you my God. God. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. His kingdom will stand forever. The Lord swore an oath to David. He will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If they keep my covenant in truth and my laws that I have taught them, their sons also shall rule on your throne from age to age. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here have I chosen to live. I will greatly bless her produce. I will fill her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful shall ring out their joy. There David's stock will flower. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. I will cover his enemies with shame, but on him my crown shall shine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. His, his kingdom, kingdom will stand forever. forever. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the marvels he has created on this earth. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the house of the Lord and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
reform your ways and your deeds so that I may remain with you in this place. Put not your trust in the deceitful words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Only if you thoroughly reform your ways and your deeds, if each of you deals justly with his neighbor, if you no longer oppress the resident alien, the orphan and the widow, if you no longer shed innocent blood in this place, or follow strange gods to your own harm, will I remain with you in this place, in the land which I gave your fathers long ago and forever. But here you are, putting your trust in deceitful words to your own loss. Are you to steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, go after strange gods that you know not, and yet come to stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we are safe, we can commit all these abominations again? Has this house which bears my name become in your eyes a den of thieves? I too see what is being done, says the Lord. You may go to Shiloh, which I made the dwelling place of my name in the beginning. See what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have committed all these misdeeds, says the Lord, because you did not listen, though I spoke to you untiringly, because you did not answer, though I called you, I will do to this house named after me, in which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, just as I did to Shiloh. I will cast you away from me, as I cast away all your brethren, all the offspring of Ephraim. You, now, do not intercede for this people. Raise not in their behalf a pleading prayer. Do not urge me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, their fathers light the fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the Queen of Heaven while libations are poured out to strange gods in order to hurt me. Is it I whom they hurt, says the Lord? Is it not rather themselves to their own confusion? See now, says the Lord God, my anger and my wrath will pour out upon this place, upon man and beast, upon the trees of the field and the fruits of the earth, it will burn without being quenched. Have you made this house which bears my name a den of thieves? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Do not turn my father's house into a marketplace. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. From the Confessions of St. Augustine, Bishop. The day was now approaching when my mother Monica would depart from this life. You knew that day, Lord, though we did not. She and I happened to be standing by ourselves at a window that overlooked the garden in the courtyard of the house. At the time, we were in Ostia on the Tiber. We had gone there after a long and wearisome journey to get away from the noisy crowd and to rest and prepare for our sea voyage. I believe that you, Lord, caused all this to happen in your own mysterious ways. And so the two of us, all alone, were enjoying a very pleasant conversation, forgetting the past and pushing on to what is ahead. We were asking one another in the presence of the truth 
for you are the truth, what it would be like to share the eternal life enjoyed by the saints, which eye has not seen nor ear heard, which has not even entered into the heart of man. We desired with all our hearts to drink from the streams of your heavenly fountain, the fountain of life. That was the substance of our talk, though not the exact words. But you know, O Lord, that in the course of our conversation that day, the world and its pleasures lost all their attraction for us. My mother said, Son, as far as I am concerned, nothing in this life now gives me any pleasure. I do not know why I am still here, since I have no further hopes in this world. I did have one reason for wanting to live a little longer, to see you become a Catholic Christian before I died. God has lavished his gifts on me in that respect for I know that you have even renounced earthly happiness to be his servants. So what am I doing here? I do not really remember how I answered her. Shortly, within five days or thereabouts, she fell sick with a fever. Then one day, during the course of her illness, she became unconscious, and for a while she was unaware of her surroundings. My brother and I rushed to her side, but she regained consciousness quickly. She looked at us as we stood there and asked in a puzzled voice, Where was I? We were overwhelmed with grief, but she held her gaze steadily upon us and spoke further. Here you shall bury your mother. I remained silent as I held back my tears. However, My brother haltingly expressed his hope that she might not die in a strange country, but in her own land, since her end would be happier there. When she heard this, her face was filled with anxiety, and she reproached him with a glance because he had entertained such earthly thoughts. Then she looked at me and spoke, Look what he is saying. Thereupon she said to both of us, Bury my body wherever you will. Let not care of it cause you any concern. One thing only I ask you, that you remember me at the altar of the Lord, wherever you may be. Once our mother had expressed this desire as best she could, she fell silent as the pain of her illness increased. The time is growing short. So we must rejoice as though we were not rejoicing. We must work in the world, yet without becoming immersed in it. For the world as we know it is passing away. We have not adopted the spirit of the world. For the world as we know it is passing away. Let us pray. God of mercy, comfort of those in sorrow, the tears of Saint Monica moved you to convert her son Saint Augustine to the faith of Christ. By her prayers, help us to turn from our sins and to find your loving forgiveness. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. 